Good afternoon. Today we're going to focus a bit on some guidance around safely gathering for the holidays. But first, I want to give an update on the COVID-19 data. Yesterday, the Department of Public Health reported 3,572 new cases. 56,000 cases plus 56,000 tests were reported, and we've now done over 9.6 million tests so far in Massachusetts. 1,788 people were in the hospital, and 354 of those were in the ICU. Now, in the weeks leading up to Thanksgiving, the Department of Public Health put out guidance emphasizing the safest way to celebrate the holiday would be with members of your own immediate household. Unfortunately, a few days after Thanksgiving, we started seeing significant increases in new COVID cases and hospitalizations. This increase accelerated some troubling data trends and has put a significant strain on our healthcare community. In the 10 days before Thanksgiving, Massachusetts was averaging roughly 2,500 new positive cases a day, and that was included with a higher testing volume than we had seen previously. But after Thanksgiving, our numbers shot up, and the seven-day average on December 1st was about 2,444 cases, which would have been four or five days after Thanksgiving. And eight days later, which would have been 13 days after Thanksgiving, that number had nearly doubled to almost 4,800 cases a day. That's a 96% increase in a little over a week. Similarly, prior to Thanksgiving, our positive test rate was pretty stable and had consistently been somewhere in the 2-3% range under 4%. The current test rate, as most people know, is around 5.7%. Those combination of facts have translated into a significant increase in COVID-19 hospitalizations over the past three weeks, up by 93%. Patients in the ICU have increased by 73%, and patients intubated have increased by 104%. We've also seen deaths increase by 84% since Thanksgiving. 689 people have died in Massachusetts since Thanksgiving due to COVID. I don't need to tell anybody that these aren't just numbers. They're people and their stories and their relationships. Families have lost loved ones. People's lives have been shattered. And our hearts continue to go out to them. But the data points do speak to how COVID-19 moves. It doesn't stop. Many people have light or no symptoms at all. But at the same time, it can make others horribly ill. Roughly half the people in Massachusetts who get COVID never feel sick, never show any symptoms, but they can spread the virus again and again. Public health officials in our administration have warned folks for weeks to avoid large holiday gatherings heading into Thanksgiving because when folks are at home with family or friends, they do tend to let their guard down. That's where the virus thrives, and over Thanksgiving in Massachusetts, it clearly did. More people are sick, our hospital system's feeling the strain. More people need hospital-level care, and healthcare workers are being pushed, once again, to their limits to take care of those with COVID and others. It's not a secret that we're in a second surge here in Massachusetts. And while hope is clearly right around the corner, arriving in dry ice in the form of a vaccine, it's not here yet. Getting through this period between now and when that vaccine is more available to people around the Commonwealth requires that we all do things that we know can stop the spread. Wearing masks, 
avoiding groups, staying within your immediate household, engaging in good hygiene. After seeing what happened in the aftermath of that one day Thanksgiving, I don't think we should kid ourselves about the holidays in December. I'm pretty sure I'm stating the obvious here, but the holidays won't be the same as they've been before. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's, New Year's Eve, they simply can't and for most people won't be the same. But I'm here today to say that we really can't have them be the kind of consequential event that Thanksgiving has been here in Massachusetts. We really do need the help of everybody to make sure that we don't have a repeat so that our hospital system can continue to provide the critical medical care that it does so well for those who need it. And I can't emphasize enough that this is not forever. This is once, one time, one month, one year, where Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's Eve really do and should be different. Next year, we'll probably be able to celebrate those holidays just like we used to, but not this year. Now, later today, DPH will release guidance on safe celebrations for the holidays. And Secretary Sutters will talk more about that in her remarks. But it's pretty simple. The safest way to celebrate this year is with members of your own household. And to postpone or cancel any travel plans and to avoid gatherings with people you don't live with. Any type of celebration beyond that has real potential, as we saw with Thanksgiving, to spread the virus and hurt the ones we all love most. Now, Suffolk University put a poll out the other day, and one of the questions they asked in the poll was, how do you plan to spend the holidays? Now, roughly 70% of the people said they plan to spend them either with their immediate household or alone, and about 30% of those surveyed said they plan to spend it with people outside their household. To those who plan to spend the holiday with people outside their household, I would really ask you and urge you to first of all reconsider that recognizing how difficult in a time like this that is for everyone. But if you must, you should treat it like a formal, traditional event that takes place indoors with people you don't live with in the midst of a pandemic. Which means people should wear masks, they should open the windows, They should use good hygiene. They should distance if they can and follow the rules that have been put in place and proven to be successful in so many other ways since the beginning of this pandemic. And I say that for those you love and for yourselves. with a recognition and an understanding that we just saw this movie. And it dramatically impacts those closest to you and the rest of us here in Massachusetts. Now our hospitals have pivoted to their surge plans and they've created capacity and they've postponed elective surgeries in order to meet the demands of our residents. But we need to help protect them too, so that our residents can access the medical care that they need. 
goal all along has been to protect public health while keeping schools and the economy as open as possible. But if our hospitals can't keep up, we have few le options left other than more restrictions. And we know that the people of Massachusetts have been through a lot. Anybody who's seen the Lieutenant Governor's or my email box knows that. Isolation, uncertainty, real sacrifice. It has been a very tough year. But there's hope on the horizon here. Yesterday, Massachusetts hospitals started receiving their first shipments of the COVID vaccine. And so far, four hospitals have received about 6,000 first doses. Today, the Commonwealth is expecting the federal government to ship about 53,625 more doses to 17 more hospitals statewide. This is part of the first 300,000 first doses of the vaccine that are expected to rise before the end of December. And yesterday, the first resident of Massachusetts received a COVID-19 vaccine. Martha Klessens, a 96-year-old World War II veteran, received the first vaccination at the VA Bedford Healthcare System, and she is also the first VA patient nationwide to receive the vaccine. Today, the first healthcare workers here in Massachusetts will be vaccinated. And phase one of the vaccine plan is very much underway. Clinical and non-clinical healthcare workers providing direct and COVID-facing care are getting vaccinated first so we can protect our healthcare system. Vaccines are being delivered directly from the federal government to the hospitals. And in line with the state's vaccine prioritization framework, hospitals have developed plans to vaccinate their eligible staff members. We expect to roll out the vaccinations to this group to last several weeks for most hospitals. Vaccinations will start for long-term care families, rest homes, and assisted living facilities for both residents and staff. CVS and Walgreens will assist with vaccinations, and we anticipate this phase will begin around the 28th of December. And pending the approval of Moderna's emergency utilization authorization, we expect another 120,000 doses of the vaccine to be sent to Massachusetts in the next few weeks. These doses will be distributed to hospitals, community health centers, and other large ambulatory care practices. In all, we expect to receive about 300,000 doses, as I said, by the end of the year. Hospitals will report their vaccine data into the DPH which will record the number of vaccines administered to residents. In coordination with the COVID Command Center, a public dashboard that keeps track will be launched next week. Secretary Sutters will share more on this in a minute. And with vaccines starting to arrive here in our state, the path back to something that looks a little more like normal is just around the corner. But it's critically important for us all to stay the course in the meantime. And that means continuing to wear masks, not spending time with groups of people in informal settings who aren't part of your immediate household, going to work, following the rules, going to school, and sticking with the people you live with just to get us through this difficult winter. The fact that we are, in some respects, on the last lap should make doing some of these difficult things that we've been doing for months a little easier to put up with. A few more months of masks and distance and COVID precautions and not letting our guard down is right there in front of us and the right thing to do. And if people stay home and celebrate small this year, it will help everybody work their way through the beginning of next year. We have a chance here to play offense, but it's critically important for all of us to do the things we need to do to get from here to there.